It's that time of the year when we can finally get excited about product launches, or at least we hope, with CES 2025 now upon us. Now, typically I'd be at CES, though due to world events, I've not actually been since 2020, and I can't attend this year due to a surgical procedure I had to go under a little over a month ago. Now, I'm not completely sad though, as today we were planning to bring you a comprehensive coverage of both NVIDIA and AMD's latest GPU announcements from CES 2025. But, well, funny story, it seems AMD decided to pull a disappearing act that would even make Houdini proud. Don't worry though, we do have some AMD info to share at the end. But for now, let's dive into what NVIDIA's cooking up with their latest new Blackwell architecture. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. It's running hot. How do I know if it's safe? Get the Wireview Pro. The Wireview Pro safeguards your graphics card with real-time power and temperature monitoring, acoustic alarms for custom thresholds, and sensor pin detection to ensure proper 12VH PWR connection. External sensors can monitor additional components like memory or voltage regulators, while an OLED display provides instant insights, meaning that this is the last time you'll blow a 12VH PWR connector, soldier. To keep your system protected, click the link in the description below. All right, let's talk about what Nvidia just dropped on us, the RTX 50 series, powered by the new Blackwell architecture. And boy, did they come out swinging. The lineup starts with the RTX 5070 at $549, followed by the 5070 Ti at $749, the 5080 at $999, and tops out with the monster RTX 5090 at $1,999. Yep, you heard that right, two grand for a graphics card. I can hear wallets crying already. Now, you'll be able to take out a second mortgage for your brand new RTX 5090 starting on the 30th of January, or potentially the 31st. So keep watch for that for when that arrives, because even at that price, I do fear that stock may be an issue if history is anything to go by. Now, before you have a heart attack over those prices, or pretty much just the 5090, let's talk about what you're actually getting for your money. The flagship RTX 5090 is packing some serious hardware. 21,760 CUDA cores, 32 gig of GDDR7 memory on a massive 512-bit bus, and a boost clock of 2.41 gigahertz. And speaking of power, this beast draws 575 watts with a recommended power supply of 1,000 watts, which is actually, well, a little bit higher than its predecessor, the RTX 4090, with its still extravagant 450 watt total graphics power. Yes, your electricity bill might hate you, but frame rates will love you, so there is that. Though interestingly, despite the higher power draw, Nvidia's managed to keep temperatures in check. The 5090 peaks at 90 degrees compared to the 4090 similar thermal performance. The card even needs four 8-pin PCIe cables for the included adapter, or a single straight 600 watt PCIe Gen 5 cable. Now, as we move down the lineup to the RTX 5080, which is no slouch either, it comes in with 10,752 CUDA cores and 16 gig of GDDR7 on a 256-bit bus. It's kind of like the 5090 slightly more reasonable sibling who still knows how to party, but won't max out your credit card. Now, the power requirements are more manageable too, 360 watt TGP and an 850 watt recommended PSU. Then we've got the 5070 Ti with 8,960 CUDA cores and the same memory config as the 5080, but a more modest 300 watt power draw. Then finally the 5070, which rounds out the lineup with 6,144 CUDA cores and 12 gig of GDDR7 on a 192 bit bus, sipping on a relatively modest 250 watts. But the real story here isn't just about raw hardware specs, it's about the incredible leap in AI performance. Yes, I know, we're all sick to death of hearing about AI, but for Blackwell, it seems to make a lot of sense. The fifth generation tensor cores in these cards are absolute monsters. For example, the 5090 can deliver 3,352 AI tops, while even the entry level 5070 manages 988 AI tops. To put that into perspective, that's more AI processing power than some entire data centers had just a few years ago, sitting right there in your gaming rig. Now, one thing to note though, Nvidia keeps throwing around these AI tops numbers, 3,352 for the 5090, 1,801 for the 5080, and so on. But here's the thing, 
we don't actually know what these numbers mean in real world terms. It's a bit like when car manufacturers quote horsepower numbers without any context. Sure, bigger is probably better, but how much better? That's the real question. Now, keeping with AI, let's dive into DLSS4 because this is where things get really interesting. I mean, the results speak for themselves. In titles like Cyberpunk, we're seeing multiple exponents of performance improvements. That's not just a number. That's the difference between playing at 4K60 and 4K240+. And here's the kicker. DLSS4 is launching with support for 75 games and apps on day zero. Do you know how many games FSR4 will support at launch? Zero. Or, well, two, if you're being kind. Maybe that's why AMD was playing hide-and-seek at CES. Kind of hard to show up when your competitor has 73 more games than you. And considering FSR4 will only work on RDNA 4 and maybe RDNA 3, well, let's just say AMD might need a time-turner to catch up with NVIDIA on this one. Now, the magic behind DLSS4 is actually pretty fascinating. NVIDIA is using transformer models, yes, the same kind of AI that powers ChatGPT, to enhance image quality. And we're talking improved temporal stability, less ghosting, and just higher detail in motion. The real game changer is multi-frame generation, which can now generate up to three additional frames for each rendered frame, effectively giving you four times frame multiplication. And this new model is 40% faster and uses 30% less VRAM than before, which is well, pretty impressive given what it's doing. And I guess keeps those people quiet who keep on harking on about how VRAM capacity is the be all and end all. This just shows, well, it's not. Now, something to keep in mind is that a lot of the results shown by NVIDIA regarding games are with DLSS 4, especially when they're comparing a RTX 5070 to an RTX 4090 and claiming that they have similar performance. So until we do further testing ourselves, take them with a pretty large pinch of salt because we'll also be showing functionality and features like DLSS, but for us, I guess it's more about showing off pure rasterization performance in a like-for-like -like scenario, especially when comparing to the competition. Now, when looking at how things do compare, the previous DLSS versions used convolutional neural networks, or CNNs, but with DLSS4, they're introducing the first real-time use of transformer models in graphics. These transformers can evaluate the relative importance of each pixel across the entire frame and over multiple frames. Look at these scenes from Alan Wake 2, for instance. See how there's just more noise in the CNN model? That's the transformer model at work helping to reduce it down. And let's talk about other features that are coming out, like Reflex 2, NVIDIA's latest weapon in the fight against input lag. Using a clever technique called frame reprojection, it can actually predict and adjust frames based on your mouse movement before they're even rendered. In the finals, running at 4K with max settings, they've demonstrated cutting latency from 56 milliseconds down to just 14, which is a staggering 75% reduction. The best part? This isn't just for the fancy new cards. Reflex 2 will be supported across all RTX GPUs, breathing new life into, well, older hardware. Now, the science behind Reflex 2 is actually pretty cool. When you aim to the right with your mouse, traditionally you'd have to wait for that action to be received, processed, rendered, and then displayed. But Reflex 2's frame warp takes your latest mouse input and warps the frame that's just been rendered to match your new camera position. It's doing this as late as possible in the pipeline right before the frame hits your display. And those little gaps that would normally appear when shifting the image, well, NVIDIA's developed a special latency optimized predictive rendering algorithm that uses camera, color, and depth data from previous frames to fill them in seamlessly. What's really impressive though is how this works in both CPU and GPU bottleneck scenarios. While the original Reflex was most effective when your PC was GPU bottlenecked, Reflex 2 brings significant improvements across the board. Take Valorant, for example. It's typically CPU bottlenecked and runs at crazy high frame rates, like 800 plus FPS on the RTX 5090. With Reflex 2, they're seeing latency under three milliseconds. I mean, that's literally faster than human reaction time. So with that out of the way, let's get back to the hardware and looking at other things like temperature management, because this is another area where Nvidia has done some impressive work. Despite the monster performance numbers, they've managed to keep the thermal targets well, pretty reasonable. The 5090 tops out at 90 degrees, while the 5070 runs even cooler at 85 degrees. Of course, you'll want to make sure your case has good airflow, as these cards might not run as hot as their predecessors, but they're still pushing some serious power through those cooling systems. It's, well, small as well. With the Founders 5090, it's a two-slot design, so it's basically going to fit in any sort of PC, including small form factor builds, and NVIDIA have done a good job on making the Founders card well, 
pretty stunning to look at. Though I wouldn't put it past AIBs to give them some sort of fattening up treatment. So three slot cards, four slot cards, they're probably still going to make it to market. Now, one thing that's particularly impressive is the display support. All cards in the lineup can handle 4K at 480Hz with 12-bit HDR, or 8K at 120Hz with DSC. Support and support for DisplayPort 2.1b with UHBR 20 and HDMI 2.1a. Now, compared to the 40 series, support for 4K at 240Hz, this is a massive leap forward in high refresh rate gaming capabilities. That's well, absolutely bonkers when you think about it. We've gone from being excited about 4K60 just a few years ago to having GPUs that can push pixels faster than most monitors can even display them. So yeah, AOC, Philips, MSI, all you monitor manufacturers out there, you need to up your game a little bit. Now, the memory subsystem also deserves a special mention too. This is the first GPU lineup to feature GDDR7 memory across the board. Even the... Uh, Entry level 5070 gets 12 gig of GDDR7, while the 5090 rocks a massive 32 gig buffer. In an era where games are getting more and more demanding with their VRAM requirements, this kind of future proofing is really welcome and may make the difference compared to the competition as well. Now, speaking of the competition and that whole AMD situation I promised to cover, well, while they didn't show any new GPUs at CES, they did reveal some interesting stuff, just not to the public, and maybe just not in the way that they actually hoped. Now, AMD's big software play is the new Adrenaline AI feature set, which includes image generation, document summarization, and an AI assistant, and FSR4, as shown previously. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Isn't this just chat GPT with an AMD logo slapped on it? Well, maybe we can ask the assistant why they skipped announcing their GPUs once it's out. Wouldn't that be funny? The timing of their GPU, let's call it no-show, starts making more sense when you look at their new branding strategy for RDNA 4. They're essentially simplifying their lineup to match NVIDIA's naming scheme, which, let's be honest, is probably the most competitive thing that they've done so far, at least on the Radeon side of the business. But hey, at least they've showed up with their CPU game pretty strong. The new Ryzen 9 9950X 3D is legitimately impressive. We're talking 16 cores, 32 threads, 5.7 gigahertz boost clock, and it's showing to be about 8% better in gaming compared to the 7950X 3D in some titles. They're also claiming it's the world's best gaming processor. And looking at these numbers, well, they might not actually be wrong. Now, let's go back to the GPU side of things, because on the GPU front, it's looking a bit rough. When your biggest announcement is essentially, we have AI features too, and your next gen cards are mainly focused on simplifying the model system to match direct competitors, you can kind of see why they might have wanted to skip the big stage at CES. I mean, generating pictures of penguins in adrenaline is cool and all, but maybe not quite on the same level as Nvidia's 75 game DLSS4 lineup and frame generation technology. Yeah, it's a tough sell. And there has been rumors on the rumor mill, shall we say, about maybe the Radeon business not heading in the, the right direction like their desktop CPU market is. Now, before we wrap up, let's address the elephant in the room. Should you actually upgrade to these new cards? At least if we're just talking about Nvidia. Well, it's complicated. On one hand, the pricing is surprisingly competitive, especially considering what many of us were expecting. $2,000 for the 5090 might sound crazy, but remember when everyone thought it would hit $2,500? So at least there's a silver lining there, I guess. Now, the rest of the lineup is similarly positioned. 999 for the 5080, 749 for the 5070 Ti, and 549 for the 5070. These are actually pretty reasonable prices for next-gen hardware. And as always, with the top-tier card, and I've said this in the past, not everyone needs it, and they are more like Titan cards in GeForce clothing. So instead, consider the 5080 as the top-tier consumer graphics card instead. Now, there is actually one area where things get a bit tricky. NVIDIA is being unexpectedly generous with feature support across generations. And I just want to break that down to simplify it a bit. The new DLSS multi-frame generation, well, that's exclusively for the RTX 50 series. What about regular frame generation with its improvements? Well, that's for both the 50 and the 40 series cards. But here's where it gets really interesting. DLSS ray reconstruction, super resolution in beta, and DLAA also in beta, improvements are actually coming to every RTX card, all the way back to the 20 series. Similarly, Reflex 2 is being backported across the RTX family as well. And well, there's also the secondary angle here that we don't know pricing for RDNA 4 GPUs, but they'd be hard to justify anyways, unless they were far cheaper than the Nvidia equivalent, given the standing, which 
I guess is likely another reason why AMD went quiet on the whole thing, to see what NVIDIA were doing in a bid to try and come up with well, something competitive. But if NVIDIA are adding all these kind of new features to older generation cards, it's going to make it even harder for AMD, which is probably NVIDIA's plan all along. So who should actually upgrade? Well, if you're running something older than a 30 series and you want the latest tech, absolutely. The value proposition is clear. Now, if you're a competitive gamer or content creator who needs every last bit of performance, then the likes of the 5090 is a monster that will serve you very well, though I guess the 5080 actually looks like the sweet spot for high-end gaming. Similar to how the 4080 ended up being the value pick of last gen concerning high-end performance. But if you're sitting on a 40 series card, well, unless you absolutely need the multi-frame generation or the absolute peak of performance, you might just want to wait. The feature support across generations means your current card is about to get even better with drivers and updates. So maybe wait to see how that serves you and then decide from there. Either way, people will always upgrade to the latest tech. And I can't actually blame them as, well, it's exciting. And us as gamers and enthusiasts love that stuff and will continue to, sometimes just even completely ignoring the price element of it all. So that's going to about do it for our coverage of major CES announcements for 2025. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments. Are you going to be running out like AMD did to get any of these new GPUs? Or do you think you'll keep what you have? Also, if you love what we do, consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get access to a whole host of goodies, including behind the scenes content, access to our testing data, bi-weekly game nights, meetups at our offices, and much, much more. The link is, as always, down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.